Deuteronomy chapter number one, the eighth verse from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Look, I have set the land before you. Go in and take possession. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, go and take possession. For a few moments, on today, I want to dialogue with you from the subject, from promise to possession. From promise to possession. We understand that in Moses' dialogue to the current generation of Israelites, he is simply explaining to them what the Lord has done for his people. The reason he engages them in this conversation is so that the current generation of Israelites would be at ease with giving God their full allegiance and so that they would have a heart dedicated to the service and the loyalty that God requires. Mm -hmm. I want us all to understand clearly that Moses wants the current generation to understand God's holistic thankfulness. Mm -hmm. Just to share my part there for a second. Because there's a lesson in Moses wanting the current generation to hear, know, and understand God's holistic things. Allow me to throw this in parenthetically, and then we're going to move on. But we must understand that it is our mandate to articulate and live accordingly to the faithfulness of God in the presence of the up and coming generation. All right. What that tells me is that our gems and our jewels should be at the forefront of sharing the faithfulness of God to those of us who are coming up behind them. Yeah. Amen. If we share the faithfulness of God, see, the next generation will be at ease with giving God their all. Amen. And they will give God their full allegiance, dedication, and unconditional loyalty if we live right and love right on today, as we know, God has never left us. Amen. Nor has He forsaken us, even when we have abandoned Him. Amen. Furthermore, what Moses is trying to impart in them is trust in God. So he reminds them that not only is he the creator of all, 
He is also their provider, their protector, their sustainer, and God is the ultimate God. As we talked, when we dialogued about the divine impulse a few weeks ago, we understand that Moses is giving this current generation of Israelites directives. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we understand that these directives come directly from God. All right. We understand that not only are these directives applicable to Israel, but they're also applicable to us today in 2024. All right. See, Moses, he lets them know that they must break camp. Mm. Moses lets them know that they need to begin to move. Moses lets them know that they need to go to the destination that God has downloaded into their spiritual GPS units. Yeah. And that's your heart. All right. And finally, Moses tells them to possess the land. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, we understand what it means to break camp. All right. I think we understand what it means to move. I think we understand that we know how to go and get to a place. But sometimes I think it's unclear on what it means to possess the promises of Almighty God in 2024. Yeah. Right. See, sometimes we want to sing our way through it. All right. Sometimes we want to work our way through it. All right. Sometimes even we want to connive our way through it. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. There's some churches that want to dance and shout their way through it. And there's some folks that want to collect titles because they feel they can climb up to it. But I come by here to 100 Lemon Street to let you know that it is important for us to understand God, yes. listen to me closely, and to understand his promises. Yes. It's just not about being aware of the promises, right, right. but it's also about having a strong desire to take hold of what God has in store for us. Sometimes we must encourage ourselves yeah. as we encourage others well. to be motivated. All right. But understand, church, that this motivation that we have for possessing the land should not only be on Sunday between 1, between 11 and 12.30. All right. Come back. However, we should be making a deliberate decision to follow through on what God has called us to do. See, only you know what God is telling you to do. But it is your mandate to simply do it. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, just do it. Yes, Give your other neighbor a high five and tell them, just do it. Yeah. Once the decision has been made yeah. to possess what God has promised us, Thinking the sense that I want you to 
understand that action is required. Yes. Effort is required. Yes. And determination is a must. Amen. Amen. There must be action in what God has mandated for us to do. Amen. We have to understand that persistence in pressing forward is the key. And we must bear the responsibility of fulfilling what God has called us to do. Amen. See the songwriter says, I can hear my Savior calling. Yeah. Well. I will go with him through the garden. Yeah. Yeah. I will go with him through the judgment. Yeah. He will give me grace and he will give me glory. All right. See, he goes on to say where he leads. HMBC, we go fuck. Yeah. Oh. We will go with him and we will go with him all the way, no matter what circumstances comes our way. Amen. Our goal is not only to look at the promise. My God. Our goal is not only to reminisce about the problem, the, the promise, but our goal is to take hold of the promise and do what God has called us to do no matter what comes our way. All right. We understand that our text for today. We understand that it was penned by Moses, the son of Amram and Jochebed, who were members of the tribe of Levi. All right. Who lived during the time when Pharaoh had ordered the killing yes. of all Hebrew male babies. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, to save her son, Jochebed hid Moses in a basket and set him afloat. All right. Ray, I want to make sure I get this correct. Man. On the Nile River, yeah. not the Nile River. Yeah. <laughs> he was found by Pharaoh's daughter, yes, and raised in the Egyptian royal court. Amen. Despite being raised as an Egyptian prince. Moses eventually learned about his heritage. After witnessing an Egyptian mistreating a Hebrew slave, all right, Moses threw hands. Come on now. And he killed the Egyptian yes. and fled to Midian to escape Pharaoh's wrath. As we already know, Moses is addressing the current generation yes. of Israelites. He wants them to grasp how they should respond when God blesses them with abundance. Yes. Sometimes. We need to learn how to respond. Yes. When God blesses us with abundance. Yes. Yeah. But he also wanted them to understand what actions they should avoid. All right. When they receive the blessings. Uh -huh. Let me throw this in parenthetically. Okay. There's some actions that we must avoid. <laughs> When we walk into the land flowing with milk and honey, Amen. 
The key concept that we want to understand or today is just one word. Possess. We want to understand what it means for the people of God to possess the land in 2024. All right. The term possess for my note takers means take hold of and cherish. Yeah. It also means to have control over or own something. Yeah. Possession can refer to both physical ownership of a tangible object like possession of property. Yeah. As well as more abstract concepts well. like knowledge, yeah. uh -huh. skills, mm. or spiritual gifts. All right. It implies that we, as the people of God, have been granted by God a certain level of control or authority over what we possess. Amen. Amen. Are y'all with me on today? Yes. On now. Right there next to you. Mm. When we look at the text, in a modern context, possession involves being willing to receive and then establishing ownership through spiritual means. All right. And by having a made up mind that no matter what comes our way, we are focused on taking hold of the greater that God has provided. All right. Furthermore, when we have a made up mind to take hold of the greater that God has provided, we must holistically embrace the responsibilities associated with ownership. All right. Nobody in this room should be confused about that. Because if you own a house, there are responsibilities Amen. that come with your house. If you own a car or are working your way to own a car, there are responsibilities that come along with having a car. There's maintenance. My God. Taxes every year. Amen. Gas if you want to get to church. You have to take care of what you own. Yes. Yes. So as we embrace the responsibilities associated with ownership, we must acknowledge we must also acknowledge not only the blessings of possession, mm -hmm. but also be willing to endure the challenges, the isolation, mm -hmm. and the ridicule yeah. that comes with being selected by God Hallelujah. for ownership. Hallelujah. Nobody ever told you that the road was going to be easy. That's right. Jesus actually tells us in the word that it ain't going to be easy. He said if anybody wants to follow me let them deny themselves. That simply means that what goes on in the household of faith ain't about none of us. It's all about Jesus. Yeah. 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 But he goes
goes on to say, take up your cross. Yeah. Which lets us know that there's going to be some suffering along the way. Yeah. Understand that there's no salvation without a cross. There's no salvation without struggles. There's no salvation without burdens. There's no salvation without hard times. And in the midst of it not being about us, and in the midst of the struggles, we are mandated because we're disciples to follow him daily. There are some challenges with ownership. This means in the midst of the challenges and in the midst of the struggles, we still got to be thankful. So I'm stabbed in the back. <laughs> I'm thankful. When it calls me everything but a child of God, I'm thankful. When I'm isolated, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the great things He has done for me. So with all of this said, what does possession look like in 2024? Number one, and I want you to listen to me closely, there must be a commitment to custodianship. I'm going to let that sink in. Custodians over God's promises mm -hmm. are individuals who have the responsibility to care for, protect, and manage Hallelujah. everything that God everything. has blessed them with. Yes. Amen. Tell your neighbor you are custodian. Yes. You are. Tell your other neighbor you are a custodian. Mm -hmm. See, so understand when we possess the land in 2024, we must be committed Hallelujah. to intentionally being custodians of God's promise. Yes. Those who are custodians of God's promise are to be responsible and to be good stewards. Amen. Just as Israel was instructed to possess the land that was promised to them by God. Yes. In 2024, yes. possessing the land can be seen as responsibly managing the resources and environment God has blessed HMBC with. Amen. Y'all with me? Yes, Amen. The resources that we are talking about can be defined in this church as educational opportunities. All right. In our daily lives, our employment, yes. our families, our relationships, maintaining our integrity. That means we talk the talk and we walk the walk. Amen. And especially our building up the household of faith. Hallelujah. That means we do our best mm -hmm. to build up the ministries of HMBC. We are caretakers 
right. of hope. All right. All right. The action of being a responsible good steward indicates that our actions and behavior are beneficial for kingdom building, which means the long-term growth and the sustainability of the church All right. are our responsibility. Hallelujah. 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 Point number one, there must be a commitment to custod custodianship. Well, well, not only must there be a commitment to custodianship, there is a responsibility, this is point number two, for manifesting opportunities. Mm, all right. Possessing the land in 2024 means taking advantage of the opportunities and the potential that the land offers. All right. Tell your neighbor there's potential in the land. Amen. Potential. In today's terms, this translator, I want you to hear me closely, making the most of the people. Yes. All right. Yes. Yes. Making the most of our opportunities. Mm -hmm. Making the most of our talents. That's right. All right. Maximizing ministry opportunities and managing responsibly the resources that God has made available to us. Yes. Amen. Amen. And we are to be responsible every second, every minute, every hour, every day, seven days a week, 365. All right. Point number one, there must be a commitment to custodianship. Point number two, there is a responsibility for manifesting opportunity. <laughs> but last but not least, point number three, there must be, dedica uh, be dedication to nurturing a unified community. Amen. Must be. Just as the Israelites well. were called to possess the promised land together as a community. Mm -hmm. Today, possessing the land is also about building and nurturing strong communities. And these communities should not be at odds with one another. All right. But these communities should be willing to support one another. And you're right, Deacon Woods, and work towards a common goal. Amen. And that common goal is making disciples of the lost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As community builders, we should never seek to undermine or harm the unity of the church. Amen. Our focus should be the well-being of the saints. Mm -hmm. and progressive ministry. Amen. Our goal as a church is to bridge the gaps in the community and dwell together in unity. Hallelujah. This assures that there is spiritual generational wealth. Amen. Awaiting those who come behind us. So through custodianship, manifesting 
opportunities and nurturing unity. We, my brothers and my sisters, All right. will embody the principles outlined in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 8. All right. For possessing the land in 2024. Yes. HMBC, let us commit to being faithful stewards. Yes. Hallelujah. Faithful. Let us commit to being proactive seekers of God's blessings. Yes. Mm -hmm. And let us be builders of a harmonious community. Amen. As we walk in the promises and the purpose that God has for our lives. Yeah. So point number one, there must be a commitment to custodianship. Wow. Point number two, there is a responsibility for manifesting opportunities. And point number three, there must be dedication uh -huh. to nurturing a unified community. Yeah. The songwriter says, trust in him who will not leave you. Yeah. What soever years may bring, yeah. when your earthly friends, yeah. they forsake you, yeah. still yeah. more closely to him claim if we're going to break camp and remove stagnation from our being remember their security in the hands of almighty God if we're going to move expeditiously and aggressively we must acknowledge that we find security well, in the hands yeah. of Almighty God. Yeah. If we're going to obediently go yeah. to the destination oh, that God has given us, yeah. we must be assured oh, that we find security oh, in the hands yeah. of Almighty God. Yeah. If we're going to possess oh, the land yeah. And the promise is, we must be confident that we find security in the hands of Almighty God. See, the songwriter says, everybody ought to hold to his hand. I'm going to say it one more time. Everybody ought to hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Everybody ought to hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. He goes on to say, build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. My brothers and my sisters, possession of the promise requires that we be committed. Possession of the promise demands our responsibility. Possession of the promise calls for us to be dedicated and insist on our faithfulness. It means we must stand firm when trouble comes our way. It lets us know that we got to love God and love one another. See, on this Christian journey, we've had heartaches and we've had pain. Always remember, we are fighting for the Lord. On this Christian journey, we've had sunshine and we've had rain. Pray before we move. Always acknowledge we are fighting for the Lord. We've been misunderstood and we've been hurt. Don't worry. Stand firm. We are fighting for the Lord. We've been up and we've been down, but we never turned around. Never give up. We are fighting. 
before the Lord. The songwriter says, See, I once was a lonely idol, and I was a sinner too. But see, I heard a voice from heaven say, Larry, there's work to do. So I took the master's hand, and I joined the Christian band. And I'm on the battlefield for the Lord. So I guess my folks over here that I'm on the battlefield. So I guess my folks over here that I'm on the battlefield. See, when we're lost, it's something about that voice that came from heaven. When we were broken, there was something about that voice that came from heaven. When we were all alone, there was something about that voice that came from heaven. When I was sick, there was something about that voice that came from heaven. When I was lost, there was something about that voice that came from heaven. When ministry wasn't flowing, there was something about that voice that came from heaven. See, that voice that came from heaven, it was Jesus who calls us out. It's Jesus who encourages our soul. It's Jesus who protects us all the time. It's Jesus who makes a way out of no way. It's Jesus who shows us a better way. It's Jesus who encourages our heart. It's Jesus who drives away our tears. It's Jesus who guides us through. See the angels they bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. But Almighty God, we serve. See the Bible lets us know he's the chief cornerstone. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He is a day spring from on high. He is our advocate. He is our mentor. He touches the, the day. He's the resurrection. And the Bible also says he's the life. He's the savior of the world. He's the light in the darkness. He's the bread that feeds us from heaven's table. He's water that is living. He's the rock of our salvation. He's the true son of God. When you realize who he is, we can begin to move from promise to possession. When we acknowledge our stagnation, we begin to move from promise to possession. We have to get ourselves ready. We can begin to move from promise to possession. We must start to advance in the right direction. We can begin to move from promise to possession. We must be willing to take hold of all that God has for us. My brothers and my sisters, we begin to move from promise to possession. See, the songwriter said, just as I am without one plea, but thy blood was shed for me, and that thou be me come to thee. O Lamb of God, here I come. We're coming for the land. We're coming for the promise. We're coming for the blessing. We're coming for the sick. We're coming for the shut in. We're coming for the gems. And we're coming for the tools. We're coming for the young people. We're coming for our families. We're coming for our love, for joy. For peace, we're coming for the greater and 
Thank you. 